Hey everyone, it's Graphic back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about a very, very big update with the dev diary we just got here. It shows a roadmap and so much more in this recent video. So, in this month's update, you'll learn more about what's coming for this year's Winter Convergence Festival, changes to territory control, and what's coming on the next roadmap, which is, like I said, a very, very big deal. We want to see some of the big things that are planned in coming to this game. Well, the first thing you're going to see that's planned in coming to the game is, of course, going to be that Winter Convergence. You can see here, December 6th, 2022, all the way to January 10th, 2023, you can earn festive rewards with the Winter Convergence Festival. What's really cool about this as well is they are going to have settlement updates with festive looks. And imagine the turkey that spawned around the map for the Thanksgiving event, pretty much the same thing. However, it's going to be longer fights with new rewards, so that is something to look forward to. They also have the Starstone and Amrine mashup. The Mutator going into Starstone entrance includes fights from Amrine. So that's very, very cool. It's a nice little mashup. However, I will say, you know, we've seen so many great expeditions, but we want to see more. We want to see something different. And that's what they hit on next. There are some very big territory changes and shell company changes as well. So company leave cooldowns are now 72 hours and you won't be able to participate in any territory control activities with another company. That includes influence gain, wars, etc. The war roster limitation as well has been updated. Mercenary limit being added. Defense is 40 company members. Attack is 25 company members. The daily war limit being one attack per day and one defense per day. It resets at 6 a.m. and this is a count per world. So just keep that in mind. Town board. Drastically reducing the amount required to complete town boards. And that's going to be nice because we've seen how much you actually have to do to complete some of these town board missions. It'll be much easier to upgrade your town, upgrade your settlements, and that's something that companies should look forward to. Next up, we have crafting changes, so ungating recipes behind tiers. Tier 5 stations are still something to thrive or strive for, though, with Tier 5 potions, for example, being crafted, but special recipes cannot. Also, Azoth discounts are at stations and are upgraded. So you can actually use Azoth discounts as stations are upgraded, and that's going to be a huge benefit as well. Next up, of course, we have the roadmap itself. The roadmap is going to be a huge thing to talk about. Before we do so, though, I do want to say, if you haven't already, make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. And if you haven't already as well, make sure to follow me on Twitch. We stream every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern, twitch.tv slash iGraphicEye. Okay, so let's get back to the roadmap and some of the big things coming and planned. But before we do that again, I do want to say there's a huge new PTR update. So if you are a PTR player or somebody that loves testing PTR in general, make sure to go and update it now because it's a 32 gigabyte update and it may take you quite a while. All right, so now let's jump into, of course, the roadmap. First off, we have some spring changes. Empyreon, Forge Expedition, Fire Elements, Fighting Humanoids for the first time, and there's gear set storage coming as well, which is huge for the game. We've talked about how hard it is to get from your gear that is gathering gear, refining gear, crafting gear, PvP gear, PvE gear. There's so much gear to swap through. I'm really hoping gear set storage is, is going to be exactly what we need. Something that swaps your attributes, swaps your skills, swaps your gear very, very quickly and very efficiently. Next up, we have the new event, Springtide Bloom. It's a world-changing event, and you can actually go out and capture bugs. We'll see what really comes with that in more details as we get closer. There is more, though, when it comes now to the storyline. So the main storyline quests in Weavers and Brightwood is being changed and updated. They're improving it. This is huge for new players yet again. However, what I've noticed is we're seeing a lot of changes for new players when we already had a huge amount of new players come back to the game. So we do need something to give or keep all of the returning players in this game. So I do want to see more in the PvP side of things, because the only thing PvP-wise is in the summer changes here, it's the OPR cross server. And this is a gate to cross world to add more modes, which is great and all, but listen, OPR definitely needs cross server, arena definitely needs cross server, dungeon group finders definitely need cross server. This is a huge, huge thing that they need to hit on. However, there's more that they need to do for PvP if you want to keep a PvP community around. If you don't, just make it you know, kind of more known. Stop trying to do a little bit of both. I think it's a very, very big deal or very, very needed that they add some PvP maps to OPR or maybe some PvP maps to Arena or maybe some different open world aspects. There's a lot of things they can do. Under the Dev Diary video, we actually did see a nice little comment from New World. 
Having seen the dev update, what questions do you have? Let us know and we may address them in the next week's Forged in Eternum. Which is a great thing to see. You know, you love seeing the devs actually care about our questions. So, of course, I had to ask for the PvP community. After taking a look at the roadmap, my PvP community feels left out. Are there any big updates coming to PvP? New maps for OPR or Arena? Ranking systems with MMR? Cross server to Arena? So we don't have to wait those 45 minute 3v3 queues when we're full man, pre-made. It just takes so long depending on what time you're queuing. We also want to see Azoth salt uses, so the PvP shop would be a huge addition. Arena caches, so one item per chest or one piece of gear per chest instead of three like OPR. Arena has very, very lackluster rewards at the moment, and I have plenty of other ideas that could implement so much more open world PvP as well, if that's something you want to touch on. But there's so much that I think could go well with this game. I just really want them to actually implement some of these ideas and PvP things that would definitely help enhance the PvP community and the PvP space. But I do want to touch on what else they had on the roadmap real quickly. So the big thing that I really love to see PvE-wise was raid groups. 20-person raids, 4 groups, like I said, hardest to date PvE content. They also talk a little bit about the summer medley fair coming back, which is huge. We want to see that come. We want to see more events. We want to see exactly what they're doing here, but a little bit more, in my opinion, on the PvP side of things. And I would also like to see a little bit on what weapon is coming next, as really gaining hype toward that would not be a bad thing at all. And the next thing is actually something that a lot of people have been requesting. Summer 2023, they are bringing transmog to the game. This is going to add a ton of variety when it comes to the looks of every player. You're not going to see just people using purchase skins. You're not going to see just people using the PvP track gear or OPR cash drops or just the best in slots in the game anymore. Now you can actually change up your gear, each piece individually to other pieces, depending on what you want to look like. It's going to add, like I said, a ton of variety to the looks of each individual player and add personality to what they are trying to look like or their kind of style of gameplay altogether. So I'm excited for this one. And last but not least, let's touch on the Sandworm Elite Trial. This is a very, very cool aspect of what can be coming to this game. The Sandworm is a massive, massive enemy that we're going to get to fight instead of just look at all the time in Brimstone now. So I'm excited to see where this kind of content takes us, as well as what we could be seeing next for these kind of Elite Trials, as this is a huge, huge monster that we have not really fought anything really of this size before. I'm excited, you guys should be excited, and either way, let me know down in the comments what you guys are most excited about for this update, and what you guys are least excited about. What's something that really made you upset that they didn't tell us about? Either it's weapons, you know, PvP, or even if there's a PvE aspect or something, let me know. I want to know what your guys' thoughts are, my community's thoughts are, on some of these updates that they've recently been pushing out and some of the things that they've been recently working on. Overall, I think it's a very big positive for New World. I just think they could be doing a few things better, and I think they're going to continue to touch on those, though, as time goes. So we'll continue to talk a little bit about the updates coming to New World, and if you guys want to learn more about the patch notes as well, that is coming very, very soon to this channel. Patch notes just came out yesterday. For those of you who don't know, on the PTR, we're going to be talking about them and showing you guys some of the updates and big things that have come. There's a little bit of a buff to Fire Staff. There's a lot of other things to talk about. So, like I said, in the next video, we'll talk about all of that. So make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn notifications on. And if you have not already, make sure to follow me on twitch.tv slash iGraphGuy. We stream every Monday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern. I'll see you guys all in the next one.